Years ago, when I was still an entered apprentice, I traveled on business to a company where I had some work to do with another Freemason. He had, in fact, been the potentate of his local shrine. As sometimes happens in situations like that, we hit it off pretty well, and although he had gone a lot farther than me at the time, we found we had a lot in common just by our connection through the fraternity. One day as we were heading out to lunch, we walked through the parking lot at his plant. Suddenly he stopped and pointed to a square and compasses on the windshield of a car. You'll notice things like that, he told me. In fact, you'll actually start looking for them. He was right. I do notice them. I do look for them. I think to some extent we all do. On a few occasions where I've parked beside a guy with one of those emblems, we've exchanged greetings. We're complete strangers, but we know we share that bond. On one such occasion, my wife Carolyn and I we're in a new town driving around. Among other things, we discovered a beautiful, ornate church. We decided to attend the next morning. The following day, we put on, uh, as they say, our Sunday finest and headed for the church. It was a wonderful old building made of limestone with carvings and gizmos everywhere. Inside, Everything was new to us, but somehow familiar, comfortable. The greeters were quick to recognize us as visitors and just as quick to welcome us as if we were old friends. They walked us down the hall and into the sanctuary. As I entered, a colossal pipe organ, too large, too magnificent for this small, unfamiliar town, filled my field of vision. The breathtaking organ gazed down upon old, elaborate pews. On top of everything else, the sanctuary was filled with Christmas decorations. Garland hung from the rafters. Stars twinkled. A manger flanked a huge, over-decorated Christmas tree. This was a house of God. Carolyn and I slid into our seats. The choir boomed, announcing the start of the service. We sang, we prayed, we greeted each other, we listened. In a quiet moment, I sat back and simply admired the place. Suddenly, while I was soaking it all in, I felt something hit my right shoulder. I looked aside and out of the corner of my eye, I saw a hand. I moved back for a better view and saw the hand was holding a piece of paper. I took the paper and opened it and read. It started, I saw the square and compasses on your lapel. He told me his name, his wife's name, his lodge, the offices he had held. I had his entire Masonic CV scribbled on the note in front of me. At the end he asked, what about you? On the back of the note, I told him about Carolyn and myself, my lodge, the office I held in line, the parts of the ritual I knew and performed in the lodge. I handed the note back to him. In a few minutes, here it came again. Did I know so-and-so? Why were we in town? I answered his questions and asked a little bit about him. There we sat, two grown men in this magnificent house of God, in this inspiring service, passing notes like a couple of grade school kids and becoming friends, all because of a simple square and compasses pen and the bond, the brotherhood it signified. When you're a Mason in the company of Masons, there are no strangers. We as brothers love this fraternity and are interested in what happens within it and also interested in the lives of other brothers. Robert Johnson and the Whence Came You podcast have afforded me with an opportunity to share some of those stories with you. 
Some involve world-changing events. Some are nearly inconsequential. But they are all interesting because they involve our brothers and our fraternity. In episodes to come, we'll look at things like this. The fraternity, its history, the men, and yes, women, who have shaped it. Come along for the ride. For the WCY Podcast, I'm Steve Harrison with the Masonic Minute.